Networking and marketing made simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. So before we dive into today's podcast, I just want to let you know that I am grateful and honored again to have Spotify as my sponsor for this podcast episode and future episodes. And the big question that people always ask me is, you know, how do you get started with a podcast? Well, what I want to tell you is that there's an all-in-one place that's absolutely free and it's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. And this is exactly how I got started started with mine. Spotify for podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. I started with my phone. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating it right away. Then you can distribute it, your podcast to Spotify, Apple, everywhere your podcast can be heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take your conversations with your fans to the next level, like I like to, you can do Q and a, you can do polls, and that's the best way to get people talking. And with Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads like this podcast subscriptions and so much more. And best of all, it's totally free, no catch. And again, I have now eclipsed 500 thousand listens on this podcast. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I could not recommend this anymore. And if you are listening to this and you are ready to start your podcast, start today, download the Spotify for podcasters app, or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started right away. And I cannot wait to listen to yours. Hey there, and welcome back to another dual episode for the Entrepreneur Rescue Mission and Networking and Marketing Made Simple. I am here with my lovely wife and co-host, Nancy. Hello, hello. So we are going to be diving into uh, something that people love hearing about, and it's three tools of how we create and post quality content. So how do we stay consistent on social media? And they're honestly... I remember an episode that Nancy did in the first season of her podcast a number of years ago where she was giving 96 tips from Robin Sharma. And I remember I was in the kitchen and I was here. <laughs> number 87, number 88. <laughs> you remember that episode? Yeah, I do. And I was trying to find it because they were really good tips. <laughs> I, was like, I was actually digging for those the other day. Uh, and the, the episode was not four hours long. It was actually a, quite a, a, a very simplistic episode that she was just rattling them off. But anyway, we could give you 96 tips right now for tools, <laughs> but uh, we always like giving like our, our three favorite right now that are going on. And I'm going to start it off and I'm going to kick it off. Number one, chat GPT. Nancy and I did an episode about chat GPT a um, couple, couple months ago. And I actually, you know, guys have heard the episode. I interviewed someone that has a PhD in artificial intelligence. And there are, there are 100% two camps within chat GPT. There are people that despise it, hate it, think it's evil and don't want to go anywhere near it. Um, and then there's people that have completely embraced it, love it and has helped them so much. Now, this is not an episode where we're going to teach you how to write a term paper for college, where you're just going to pump something in the chat GPT and then send it to your professor. That's not what we're talking about. We love chat GPT, and I'm not going to speak for Nancy. I'm going to speak for myself. I love chat GPT because as you guys know, I love repurposing content. I love staying current. And ChatGPT can learn about you, your voice, your information, and the things that you talk about without making stuff up. So for me, when I'm using ChatGPT, why I love it so much, and I'll just give you an idea. So I write uh, consistently long form articles and posts on LinkedIn. Now, I craft my own content. So I'll write a very organic post myself 
uh, about 2,000 to 3,000 characters. Now, the great thing is that's a lot of verbiage that's just mine and all mine. And what I can do, I can grab that content, pop it in the chat GPT and say, can you take the words that I have written and expand this into a long form blog article for LinkedIn? Now, and don't make stuff up. <laughs> yeah, and don't make yeah. stuff up. So it's not pumping out gibberish. It's actually taking my own information and expanding on those topics. Now, is that the final draft? No. What I do is I take the information that ChatGPT has given me. I put it into a draft form within LinkedIn Publishing, which is the publishing format for my newsletter. I comb through it. I delete things that don't make sense. I expand on other things. I take out words that I normally don't use and put in words that I use. Now it's become mine. And going back to the interview that I did with the gentleman that had a PhD in AI, I always go back to what he told me. And I said this to Nancy. He said, you have to treat chat GPT like a sandwich. It is the bread to the meat of what you're going to offer your audience with your content, meaning what you pump into ChatGPT is the bread, but you need to go in and you got to fill in the meat of that sandwich. So for me, it has helped me create and craft so much great content based on my own verbiage where I can take micro content, I can take long form content, I can use those for scripts, for sales pages, or emails, or even videos if I want to do them that way. So I can't say highly enough how much I think of ChatGPT. So the the notion that the question that is constantly asked to Nancy and myself is, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Those days are gone. All you have to do is ask ChatGPT a question about your industry, your profession, your niche, your target market, and it will pump stuff out for you. So that is why I love ChatGPT. Jet GBT so much. Try saying that 10 times in a row. GBT, yeah. And like Scott said, if you guys know me, right? I, somebody called me the Mary Poppins of like marketing before because I've got a tool for everything, right? You know, so I could go on and on and on and talk about all the different tools. But, you know, sticking with Chat GPT for right now, it, I just couldn't agree with Scott more. Um, it's, it's a, incredible, incredible tool. And I'm so grateful for it. Um, the first day I actually found out about it, I felt like uh, Bradley Cooper from that movie uh, Limitless, <laughs> where he takes that pill and he's like, ah, and he was like so productive and like effective. In fact, I actually used ChatGP so much because I was showing people it that it blocked me a couple of times. It was like, nope, you, you're done. <laughs> you know, give it a, give it a breather. But it was so exciting to me because just like Scott said, you use it right? In the right way, right? It should be a brainstorming tool. It should be, you know, the bread and not the meat, you know, of the content that you're posting, but it allows you to really, oh my gosh, move so much quicker, right? Whenever I'm um, putting things together. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So I was doing this the other day and I'm a huge fan of, you know, a couple of different programs that you can add in and add on to chat GPT. But again, I'm not going to overwhelm you guys with more tools. Um, but one of the prompts that I started to use, okay. In this particular, um, situation. So quick little story, right? So my best friend runs a nonprofit horse farm. And so I was doing a little work in the background because I really want to work more with um, other nonprofits and I want to help them, you know, really be able to create content with ease. I want them to not stress about it and want them to have a system because it just seemed to me that a lot of people in nonprofits were not posting consistent content. And so one thing that I did is I went to chat GPT and the prompt that I used was create a social media content checklist for a nonprofit horse farm that specializes in horse therapy for children. In that checklist include suggested posts and pictures to promote the nonprofit, help tell the story behind the nonprofit and promote fundraising activities and events. Now, for all of you who have used ChatGPT, you know, right, the more that you put in the prompt and the more you kind of like, you know, rework it, um, the better uh, you can get with it. But just from that prompt, it said, you know what, here's a few things that you can really talk about in your content. One was highlighting success stories, uh, behind the scenes stories, educational content, 
fundraising activities and events, volunteer spotlights, course farm updates and maintenance, community engagement, and just different call to actions. And right, ab- right away, I'm like, yes, right? So that gives me some buckets, right, of different pieces of content that I can create under that. I took it a step further, and then I put, I want to create three social media posts per week, you know, per week for this nonprofit. Can you give me ideas for content topics I can focus on for content for posting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? And so then it took that and it broke it down and it gave me different things. So for Monday, I'm just going to give you the Monday example, just so you guys can know. So Monday was therapy success stories, share heartwarming stories of children who have benefited from the program, highlight their progress, achievements, impact on their life. Next was uh, motivational quotes, share inspiring quotes, you know, obviously, and then elaborated and then therapy techniques. Oh my gosh, right? I'm already like in love with what it's pumped out. But for those of you out there, right? you know that ChatGPT is not going to know those stories, right? You know, my friend is going to have to pull those stories together and, you know, take pictures of the horses and the kids and, you know, the actual horse farm. But these are great ways to highlight this nonprofit and get it out there and build the awareness and show how amazing it is. So again, that's just a a use, you know, of um, ChatGPT that you can do. So Now we're going to move into number two. So Scott, if you want to introduce us into tip number two, tool number two. Tool number two is um, really leveraging something called your RSS feed. Now, uh, a lot of people don't know what an RSS feed is. Well, I was going to say, actually, I'm sorry. I can speak on this topic. I I know I've been digging into this a little bit more if you want me to. That's why, yeah, I I was going to say. I I know, I'm so sorry. Right into number two. Yeah, for those listening. So I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, so this is my jam. Um, So lately, I've actually been digging a lot more into, um, you know, how can we pull together, right, the inundation, you know, the inundated, you know, all this information that is coming at us, um, and how can we kind of simplify it and be able to view it systematically, you know, whether it's weekly, whether it's monthly, um, so on and so forth. So I did a little research and I dug into, um, you know, using RSS feeds. Now, RSS feeds give you the ability to pull, right, content that's being created from different websites and platforms. Um, And if you have a tool, which I'm about to share what that tool is, you can pull them all together and create almost like a magazine for yourself of some of the latest and greatest newest industry trends and updates based on, right, the different blogs and articles and newsletters that you put into uh, the feed. So the tool that I, um, you know, have been using for that is called Feedly, uh, and that is spelled F-E-E-D-L-Y. And what I've done is I've actually created a little magazine for myself where it's got um, some of the top blogs that I follow uh, around entrepreneurship you know, the highlights and updates. I've got some things in there around marketing and social media. And then you can also search for different keywords. So, you know, for me, I teach a lot on personal branding, uh, you know, and getting yourself out there on social media. So I'll put some keywords in there as well. And what I can do is I can, right, routinely and have a system in my business where I go in there and I pull up my Feedly, my newsletter, uh, and I go through and I look at them. And I thought another neat thing that was really cool with Feedly is you can actually use, they, they provide like a dummy email where you can sign up and subscribe to newsletters and it will, it will actually pull the newsletters in all to one spot for you. So for example, there's a newsletter, I think it's called the Daily Brew. Um, and they also have one called the Marketing Brew. I could go in and grab my Feedly, you know, dummy email, sign up and subscribe for the newsletter and it'll drop right into my Feedly, uh, you know, little magazine that I'm reading each week. And then again, I pull that information and it'll allow me to stay relevant, stay up to date with content. I'm not running around in circles trying to dig through things. And it's a really nice way um, to not be overwhelmed and to really streamline that. So that's kind of, you know, and the reason why I kind of told Scott, I'm like, wait, you know, I want to talk about this because it's really been something I've been passionate about lately because, you know, as a marketer and as someone in the space, um, I just know it's, it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, you know, you guys aren't alone if you're feeling like, man, this stuff is coming out like a rocket fuel. Like it is like a new software system, information, platforms, everything, you know, it's coming out and it's not going to slow down. So if you want to, again, make sure 
that you're staying up to date, you know, with the latest information, this is just a really cool tool. And again, you want to be able to share this stuff with your audience as well to provide that special value added content. And in fact, anytime, right, you can add analytics or reference, you know, different educational material, things like that. It just sets you so much more above the bar um, and really out of the pack with some of the generic content that's been going out there lately. All right. Now, Scott, tool number three, it's all you. <laughs> well, this is not this is not a, a shameless plug. Those that have um, spent the last uh, three days now, um, depending upon when you're listening to this, you could have spent the fourth day. Uh, we did a free workshop all this week. It was called the Content Creation Workshop. And we happily and excitably announced last uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, the doors are now open to our own social media posting platform called BYOB Social. Uh, the doors are only open until this coming Sunday, which is July 30th at 9 p.m. EDT, the same time that the replays come down. And it's a very, very um, inexpensive $49 a month subscription to be able to pre-schedule your content up to seven different platforms. And that could be uh, LinkedIn company pages, LinkedIn personal, Facebook groups, Facebook business page, Instagram business pages, Pinterest, Google My Business, TikTok, um, Reels. Reels. And uh, we gratefully have well over 100 people in this community. Um, and this is bringing up the third tool, which is having a content scheduler. Nancy and I, I think, I think we talked about this about a year ago. One of the non-negotiable tools for any online business owner is having a content scheduler. If you do not have a content scheduler right now, it is probably the number one reason why you sometimes fall behind on all your content. So you may be consistent for a week or two, and then you fall off. The point of having a content scheduler is you can sit down once a month and literally schedule out and theme out your content across the board, across the seven platforms of your choice, literally in a matter of an hour, maybe to an hour and a half, and you're done. We have clients and members of this BYOB social community that actually do it quarterly. They will actually, they will plan out their quarter ahead of time and they will pre-schedule their posts, whatever they're putting out there, their infographs way ahead of time. And what really makes BYOB social special, if someone was to ask me, you know, what are some things that make it special? So obviously there's Hootsuite, there's Buffer, there's If This Then That, there's so many different things. Um, Sprout Social, is that one? No. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Yep, Sprout Social. So again, there are always cheaper things that you can buy, um, but cheaper is not always better. So the thing, why we priced it the way that we did, um, well, number one, Nancy actually hosts a once a month co-working session with her. So it's on the second Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. EDT. It's an open call for all the members. She jumps on a Zoom and whoever wants to show up, uh, she will give you content ideas for that coming month because it's always kind of themed out. And you don't get that with Hootsuite. You don't get that with Buffer. You're, you're working directly with the creators of the platform, which is us. Now, the second thing is we have a content library. So we love idea prompts, much like ChatGPT. So there is an integration within uh, BYOB Social that actually allows you to search for specific topics or posts or images based on your demographic based on your niche, based on your industry, and based on your profession. And you basically can click, drag, or just click use photo, create a post, schedule it out. The other cool thing is that there's a Canva-esque integration. So if any of you are familiar with Canva, that's where you can go on and you can create images, you can create photos, you can create posts. We have a Canva-esque integration. So if you have specific brand colors, if you have specific themes or images, you can actually drag all of that into the creator area of BYOB Social, and you can create your own posts organically yourself and then schedule them out. Um, so the other thing that I want to mention is that uh, within our company, Nancy and I hired a full-time copywriter. So within those co-working sessions that Nancy does, sometimes our co-work, our, 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 
our copywriter, not our coworker, <laughs> our copywriter will jump on to kind of help people with, um, you know, obviously ideas and prompts, Conversion. but also uh, the other great thing about BYOB social is that you can manage your inboxes. So you can manage your inbox on Facebook, on Instagram, um, and there is a new AI copy assist. So uh, again, we are always on top of it. So the developers of this platform that we able we were able to adopt and use, we're always giving them feedback of things that they should create based on what our members say. So outside of everything that I just kind of verbalized about the power and impact of BYOB Social, there's going to be a link in the description of this episode. So if you would like to sign up, you can. It's $49 a month. Cancel at any time. You're not locked in at all. There's a help desk. Uh, there's a private Facebook community where we post every week, giving you ideas and things that you can post as well. Um, it, it's just a, a, a plethora of information. Um, but aside from that, having a content scheduler for your social media content bar none is one of the most important investments that you need to make. Nance, any thoughts to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, again, it it is the solution to a problem that I had years ago um, whenever I was posting content for clients. And a lot of the people who actually use BYB Social post content for other clients. Um, it's just so incredibly user-friendly. You know, we actually have an onboarding call where we get everyone set up um, and make sure that you guys know how to connect all the different platforms um, and, you know, make sure everything's talking to each other. And we really help get you set up for success because we want you using this tool because again, we want to share this because it's one of the things that we use in our business that has made our life so much better. And, you know, if you know us, one of our core values, one of our missions is really to help people run businesses that they love, have such better and happier lives, you know, and spend time doing the things that you really want to do. And I can guarantee probably the majority of people listening don't want to be creating content and posting content all day long, right? You want to spend time with your friends, your family, or watching Netflix or, you know, doing something else. So want you guys to really enjoy your summer. Uh, you know, obviously we've got a little bit of time left before the school year starts again. And, you know, really want you to be able to get out there and not worry about creating and posting content. So BYB Social is a great solution. Again, it's super user-friendly. You're going to love it. If you have not used it already, um, our members are absolutely in love. So want to share this with you guys as well. So definitely click the link uh, to join. Again, the doors are going to be open only until Sunday uh, at 9 p.m. And after that, guys, we'll close them for a while and we don't know when we're going to open again. So just please make sure to check this out if you are ready, right, to learn this tool. Again, it's very user-friendly. Um, to be able to save time, so much time, right? Whenever it comes to, uh, you know, freeing up time that you could be spending on other things uh, and so much more. So please definitely take a look at it and uh, and sign up and join us. Yep. So again, the three tips from today, uh, ChatGPT, Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y, and obviously BYOB Social. Again, the link to sign up for our social media posting platform is in the description of this episode and the email that you received about this podcast episode. So we would love to see you in there. So everyone, we hope you found today's episode helpful, entertaining, educating, and insightful. Love and gratitude. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterin.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.